the biggest thing you can take away from it is that they officially announced or officially said that they do not intend to make any new male characters. It's over, guys. It's cook-over. We will only get women in the game from now on. No more guys. Subscribe, please. Hi guys, so yesterday we actually went over the live stream for Brown Dust 2 and we also have essentially a developer's note has been released. Uh, kind of at the same time, I didn't go over it right away because I kind of wanted to let things simmer. But now I'm going to go over this and I think it's going to be very interesting because obviously there were some technical difficulties with the live stream, the translation was a bit iffy at times. So here I want to go over this and see what is in store for us, make sure that some translations weren't um, erroneous, and also maybe have a bit more information regarding some of the upcoming changes and updates to the game. So um, I'm not going to read absolutely everything, but I'll, I'll go quickly over the interesting parts, in my opinion, obviously. So first and foremost, we do have the new character pack for Contract Wars, which has been presented in much detail yesterday and essentially it will be depicting characters in office life those are the ol outfits that we we're talking about yesterday and we have the following lore in the carter city the background setting all contracts are signed in a unique method called contract wars each cell employee of a company must compete against others to win a contract in this city, Sayer, a new salesperson of a large company named Genar Industry, will need to survive in the war with her colleagues. At first, she's timid and lacks confidence, but with help from a co-worker, she learns how to become an adept worker in the company. Stay tuned for Sayer's adorable and admirable adventure. So here we can see some of the maps that we'll have. It is obviously an office. Uh, this seems to be Justia, Sherazard. We, we have a bunch of characters here that we know, but they are most likely just going to be NPCs here, of course. And we can see the four new costumes, which are for Sayer, uh, Mikaela, Lavencia, and uh, Nebris, right? We can see the outside, it very much looks like um, a, a big city. Um, in real life, we have the metro. Uh, I, I assume this is like Seoul or something, probably. Uh, so we, we will be getting the opportunity to walk around in those small areas. There will be some chests to get. All of that. Now, on top of this, we're obviously getting the new seasonal events, which is Cart of War Z. So if you don't know, essentially, generally we get the Cart of Pack, which is like one full pack that you can go in with several difficulties you can unlock um, and all those rewards. And then the season pack is going to be... Um, this is going to be the pack that you can join into through the main menus in which you have like combat, a bit of story and all of that, right? So here we are getting Cut of War Z. Uh, we have news about the new seasonal events. On the Night of the Dark in Grim City of Carter, where the contract war is ongoing, there will be a seasonal event titled Cut of War Z. It is a story about a vindictive seller of zombie virus vaccines. He goes around deliberately spreading a zombie virus in the city because his request to sell the vaccine was denied. Sarah and others try to locate the seller responsible for the zombie plague uh, to get vaccine, but it turns out Luvencia has a phobia of zombies. To add insult to injury, Sarah's friends get bitten by zombies one by one and are separated. Will Luvencia overcome her fear of zombies and find a vaccine to save the city as well as a friend? Dive into the seasonal event story to find out. This might be a bit more actually than just the, the main menu event that we generally get. Uh, uh, I've played so many gacha games, sometimes the nomenclature being used gets it gets confusing for me, so if I'm wrong, I apologize. But this looks great. We're going to be fighting some zombies. Uh, the the good huge. The, the huge. New Finn Hunter Abomination. It's a massive zombie with a huge machine gun. Kind of looks like a, a... That would be like a Barrett zombie <laughs> from Final Fantasy. Uh, meet Abomination, a zombie who was once a normal human, but gained incredible power in physics through a strange drug. Abomination will appear as a new Finn Hunter boss. It's a monster with light property and wields powerful multi-hit attack. Lovely. Here we see the new four characters, obviously, uh, that will be available during the Contract Wars. We are getting Seer here. Uh, Nebris is actually on the far right here. Then we get Luventia here. And finally, Michaela, 
right there. Uh, the sales managers, you can also, so Sierra and Nibis are the new sales employees and Lavencia and Michaela are the sales manager. You can also see the company employee costumes you've been all waiting for. You've all been waiting for. So here we can see we have the adorable, adorable little Sierra. She looks very cute. I really like her outfit. I think she, she looks super, super adorable. Um, so he, here you can see she has like her main weapon here is like some trinkets on her bag. Very cute. She decorated a little ID badge. She has those little drones and the gun umbrella, which is really, really cool. Um, the employee costume for Sarah was who has just joined the company. She's holding dearly onto her special umbrella gun to protect herself from incoming shots. The skill set is about granting buff to her allies when hit by enemies. So as per usual, she's going to be like a tankish character that will be buffing her team when she's doing her job being tanking, which is great. Now, moving on, we have the Seal Snatcher, Lavencia. Her design is amazing. Um, she's on the back. That bike is crazy, by the way. The the, the, the back uh, uh, the wheel is huge. That's actually crazy. It's very uh, bottom heavy. <laughs> Just like her, maybe. Have you seen that thigh? Insane. They were saying how usually they weren't sure how to, to make her. They were like, oh, she has to have a motorcycle, right? Uh, because Lubensia, she's a character from Brave Nine, right? And she always had a mount. So here she's having a mount as well. She's looking great. The employee costume of Lubensia, a sales manager leading her team with a wild and tough demeanor. Carrying the tradition of always being on a vehicle since Brown Dust 1, Lubensia will be added as a physical damage dealer with darkness property. She also has a skill set to match uh, that matches her appearance of holding a shotgun. Awesome. She actually does have her motorcycle in combat. She looks amazing. Um, I, I think she looks fantastic. I cannot wait for her to get more costume. Uh, because this is the first time she's getting a costume. Moving on, we have the Queen of Signatures, Michaela. Michaela currently only has one costume, and it is the Summer Beach event costume, where she she consumes 80% of her max HP to deal damage, like large magic damage, I believe. Um, so here, hopefully... Um, that was their only costume. It was a bit hard to play around. You would need like taunt or heal or stuff like that to make sure she wouldn't die because she would end up like dropping very low HP, right? So here it says, uh, the employee costume of Michaela, a lover of serious firepower with a serene smile on her face. While well, Lavenzia has a tough demeanor, Michaela leads her team with experience, wisdom, and a laid-back attitude. Like a swimsuit costume, this one has a certain weakness, but that weakness is made up by the raw firepower she showcases as a magic damage dealer. So maybe it's going to emphasize the fact that, like, maybe she's, she's going to keep hurting herself or something like that to deal massive damage, uh, which is going to be interesting. Hopefully, we're going to get, like, more characters that work around that. Um, maybe when she gets hit with the taunt, she's going to buff her allies or heal them or something like that. In that case, that's going to work very well with Michaela. It's hard to say. Uh, I'm looking forward to actually learning what the kids do. Now, moving on, we have the new employee, Nebris, right? The employee costume of Nebris... I'm sorry, I'm going to sneeze. Uh, my apologies. The employee costume of Nebris who makes others let their guard down with a playful and mischievous smile. Like Sarah, she's a newcomer to the company, yet a skillful and relaxed atmosphere makes one wonder if she's truly a beginner in her career. Similar to the other costume, Nebris' costume is designed to be a damage dealer with wind property. She has the mechanics to produce more firepower in certain conditions. Very cool, so here you go. She looks great. I, I, is that a butterfly knife? I think it might be a butterfly knife. I'm not 100% sure. She's looking great. Very nice boots. Her bag is cute. She has a, a nice uh, a, a top. I think she looks right. Surprisingly, she has like a bracelet and watch over her top, which is an interesting design. Um, so moving on, this is her... This is, this is crazy. Like, the, I, I don't even know what to say. They, they, they were talking about how much effort they went to, like, draw her toes, which is certainly something. Anyway, Nebris will also have a pickup in December with special content, as there are many fans who love Nebris. We are making sure the preparations are going smoothly. We assume many of you will be pleased with the result. The details will be provided later, so please bear with us for a little longer. And here we do get to see the pickup information. Uh, don't hesitate to pause if you want to look exactly when... Uh, at what date each character is going to be coming out. But here, going over quickly, we'll have the new employee Seer, uh, the Seal Snatcher Lovencia, the Piercing Magic Bow Eleanor, Eleanor, sorry, which is a rerun, Queen of Signature Michaela, and Pure White Blessing Rafitia, which is also a rerun. On top of that, we obviously will be getting their exclusive gear equipment coming out as well. 
Now, moving on, we have the re-release planned seasonal events. Until the 1.5 anniversary update in December and November, we'll have three re-release seasonal events. First, the summer seasonal event Click Clicks are will be re-released, which came out very recently, so it's surprising that it's rerunning so soon. Just like the previous Berserker seasonal event, there will be only one week of hunting period without the preparation period. You can get two weeks worth of reward. We will make sure to provide the Fiend Hunter event without any issues. So this is awesome for the rerun. Essentially, we get to just straight up join into the hunting without having to wait. We can get a bunch of reward right away. Now, the season, the second seasonal event is going to be Marry Me, which is a story about the adorable Rafithia in the fairy tale world. When this event comes out, the pure white blessing Rafithia pickup with the winning dress will be released. So there we go. We're getting this rerun, and finally, we'll get a rerun for Fireworks Memories, um, which w was out on the half anniversary of last year's winter. And um, as well as the Nightmare Winter event pack that was released in the same period. It's a story about Eclipse and Celia in bunny girl costumes, which was beloved by many. Diana and Rue show off their charming look as well. Nightmare Eclipse and Masquerade Celia costumes will be released for pickup on the 1.5 year anniversary, so please wait just a little bit longer. So this is awesome, we're getting a bunch of free run. And uh, essentially, each of these reruns seem to be... It seems like they're gonna be lasting for only a week, but we'll be able to get the the classic reward of getting two weeks of reward in just one week reruns, which is great. Now we're getting a bunch of improvements for the Tower of Salvation, uh, just based on our survey, so they're listening to what the community wants. Uh, we'll have artifact combinings, uh, we'll get the artifact codex, we'll also have new artifacts, a total of 20 of them. And um, we will be going through one season with the changes before it is incorporated into a regular season content. Essentially, they're going to be trying out for one season and see if everything's all right before it's guaranteed being a recurring thing. So they're testing the waters for one season and then we'll see if it's going to be permanent. Now, on top of this, we'll also have some changes for the world, bus, world buffs. Sorry, Essentially, the way it's going to be is that... Um, there are going to be change, but because it was like, essentially, the problem is that it was pretty inflexible, it was difficult to maintain the rotation. So the way it's going to be is that um, they are essentially going to turn off the world buff uh, temporarily. Um, and they are still going to be applied um, in certain modes, like the evil castle. Um, and for now, it will just increase all damage for all properties, essentially, right? So we're just kind of waiting to see wh how they're going to change it in the future. But for now, they're still going to take effect in the Evil Castle. Now, we'll be having some UI improvement for consecutive gameplay in packs, uh, which is going to be the carry out quick quest function, which will allow you to quickly go through the great difficulties of the pack's main quest, um, which is awesome. So you'll have essentially a just quickly completed so essentially, uh, when you enter through that special button, film movement quests are automatically completed and story effects are omitted, which allows you to complete the difficulty by only clearing the battle quest yourself, which basically allows you to just go very, very fast. This is lovely, so you don't have to run around and feel like you're losing a bit of time when you already like you know, consume the content. We'll have some improvement to the battle damage UI, uh, we'll have more character filters, and uh, they're essentially going to be talking about the future updates. Uh, so they're kind of having a look at like what happened in the past 17 months, about like 14 packs, 13 seasonal events, 4 content packs, 2 growth elements, and um, just essentially saying that like everything's been pretty cool so far. Um, and they believe that right now they kind of want to focus on reducing the fatigue that people might feel over the, the quantity and quality of the content incoming, as well as like increased amount of growth um, content or updates for the characters, which can feel very exhausting. You, you feel like you finally build your character, but then this you, you have to keep building them because they added like new like engraving system and stuff like that. So now they say that they are planning to let the main content go through a four week cycle with different end games content every week. They'll constantly, consistently review each piece of content to provide a novel experience and guaranteed entertainment. They will not add content with extreme difficulty or growth elements in the near future. Essentially, we have a grace period where we can kind of chill. <laughs> they plan to focus on packs, characters, seasonal event stories, and mini games. 
as well as essentially having one pack each month. That was the plan at first, but with the introduction of the Sizzle event system, uh, essentially the packs are going to be updated every six to eight weeks. Um, since a lot of the users are fond of those pack updates, they plan to increase the frequency next year, which is great news. We believe stories should have more volume for seasonal events to replace pack updates. Therefore, starting with the 1.5 anniversary, the volume of stories surrounding seasonal events will greatly increase, which is awesome. Meanwhile, showcase minigames through field quests of the current seasonal events. We hope to find minigames with more volume for your greater excitement. We're also preparing content that can make characters more appealing through interactions and individual stories while maintaining quality control for illustration in cutscenes endearing and dear by so many players. Nebris, who I mentioned earlier, will be the first character to benefit from such content. So I assume it's going to be like maybe more character specific stories, maybe something like we can see Nike, where you can like once you increase your rank, you get to see some special episode that give like character specific story. That would be awesome. The direction we're planning to take can be summarized as the following, providing high quality entertaining content that is not mandatory. This is the motto we plan to stick to for future content as well, which is awesome. Now, on top of that, they've talk, uh, they've done a huge Q and A, right? Uh, so first of all, they're showing the result uh, here um, of the surveys. People seem to love Terraza the most from the summer updates. Um, uh, which one is the most fun and effective in battle? People say it was Morphia. I'm not going to go over all of this because uh, it's, you know, potato, potato. It's just a survey result. I don't care super much about it. Now, uh, we have um, what we'd like to see in the future. That's kind of interesting. People are saying, like, focus on character story, which is gross content fatigue, quality of life improvement, bug civilization, various package, rich event content, communicate with users, merge. So, uh, that makes sense. On top of it here, we have a developer node gift. We get 600 free Daya as well as 40 cooked rice, which is great. Now, this is not the whole Q&A. This are just the answers from the, the surveys. But during the live stream, they did do a massive Q&A. And I think the most, the biggest thing you can take away from it is that they officially announced or officially said that they do not intend to make any new male characters. It's over, guys. It's cook-over. We will only get women in the game from now on. No more guys. So if you want men, this is not going to be the game for you. This game is mostly geared toward a male audience. And the male audience only want girls. So we are only getting girls. You've been warned. There it is. Anyway, I hope this was uh, interesting. I hope I didn't yap too much. Uh, it's very, very cool. I'm super excited for more updates. I'm looking forward to the new Office um, office Life update, the, the new pack that's coming up. It is good stuff. I hope your pools have been going great during this collab. Do let me know in the comments. Lots of love to you guys. Like, subscribe, all the good, good. And I'll see you next time. Cheers!